Hey everyone, I'm back with number seven, and it is number seven. Um, I found week number four, and so I'm gonna have to go back and find the recipes. Um, so I was right, uh, and I corrected myself because I thought I was wrong, but I was right, whatever. Um, anyway, so um, <clears throat> it's week seven for me, um, <clears throat> and I've been trying to get to this for, it feels like forever, it's, I think it's only been two days. Uh, I really had planned to get this done yesterday, and I wish I would have, because I went and picked up food at a restaurant and brought it home for dinner. So, that's kind of frustrating, because if I would have done this, I would have had food at the house and not have, I had to spend all that money on a drive through to bring it home. Um, so, this week, um, I'm making a meatloaf. I haven't had that in a while with mashed cauliflower and roasted vegetables, which I think is a um, the recurring theme for my side dishes, I guess. Um, I'm going to make a recipe <clears throat> with um, where I'm gonna season a chicken, and a whole chicken, and then it's gonna cook in the crock pot. And what I do is I um, take foil, and make little balls of foil. I make three of them. And then I sit the chicken on the foil balls and it causes, it makes the chicken not sit in the juice. So you're able to, you pick up the whole chicken instead of it fall apart. And with that, we're gonna have a salad and a broccoli and cheese casserole. If I have time, I might look into trying to get that done, but I don't, I think the recipe's on my phone. Um, I'll see. And then I'm going to take uh, sirloin steak and then, um, okay, let me start over. Um, the meatloaf, we're going to mix up all the meatloaf, put it in the pan and in the loaf pan that's going to go in the fridge. The chicken, I'm going to season it, put it in the crock pot, and then put the crock pot in the fridge. Just the crock, like the breakable part, not the metal part. That's not going in the fridge. And then the sirloin steak, I'm going to cut it, season it, and brown it, and then put that in the fridge. Um, I'm gonna serve mine with, over for me, spaghetti squash. For the family, it might be mashed potatoes. Ugh, my eyes bother me. Or um, mashed potatoes or noodles, I don't know. Um, I guess it really is just gonna depend on the day that we eat it. And uh, then I'm gonna make a jalapeno popper chicken casserole. And that one is very interesting. You cut up the chicken raw, and then you mix everything together, then you put it in nine by 13 pans. So that's what I'm gonna do, and then cover that, and then stick that in the fridge. And then I'm gonna have a beef and cabbage stir fry. And I think, oh brother. Um, uh, I'm going to have the beef and cabbage stir fry tonight. So I might make that one last. If I were you, I wouldn't do it last unless you're gonna eat it tonight because you don't want it to be hot um, and then try to put it in the fridge. So I'm going to probably make work on that last. And basically all you have to do with the beef and cabbage stir fry is, I'm out of the list. Um, I'm going to brown the ground beef with olive oil, with garlic and ginger and salt and a little bit of salt and pepper. And then the day you cook, eat it, you just add um, coleslaw mix into the pot and you just cook it all together and it will come together really quickly. Uh, but we're going to have that for dinner. And if I'm filling up to it, I might make an egg drop soup. I really like egg drop soup and that is uh, a low carb um, recipe. I'm sorry. My eyelashes. Okay. And that is a one dish meal. So no real size unless you wanted to make the, um, sorry, ah, I got a text. Anyway, so, um, I'm going to have, oh goodness, my life, maybe my husband can fast forward that for me. Um, have uh, egg drop soup if you want it. I really like egg drop soup. Depending on how I feel after this, um, I will possibly go ahead and make that. Because it, it sometimes I do get tired after doing these and sometimes I still have energy to go. So um, 
hopefully uh, this will work out and I don't have this one doesn't have a a lot of cooked food I really find that when it has a lot of cooked the this day I run into a little bit of uh, timing problem and um, last week I went over by at least four minutes but again I stop and talk imagine that and uh, ramble as well and I was a little slow last week and I couldn't think of words it just wasn't my day and this is not coffee it's um, a singing canary shot uh, just trying to get in my baobab uh, especially in the winter well it's not winter here we're in Texas it's still fall but um, just want to make sure I get my my vitamin C in. okay anyway I'm sure you don't care what's in my cup all right I will warn you on um, jalapenos, if you do have gloves, and I often don't have gloves, I would wear them. If you want it hot, keep in some of the seeds. I get rid of the seeds and any of the inside that I can, and make sure you wash your hands as soon as you're done touching them. My um, Right underneath my fingernail will start to burn if I don't. Uh, I don't eat fresh jalapenos that often. Um, I prefer the pickles. I don't even eat them that often. Anyway, period, much less raw. Uh, okay, I guess we can go ahead and get started. I feel like this is a good week. I, it's kind of hard trying to come up with five recipes that we can do some prepping ahead, store some in the fridge, and then, you know, then I have to, uh, like here, like I make a grocery list, and then I break it down, and then I go back in, and I break it down into each section and then I have to write out kind of what I'm going to do in the order uh, and this week I feel like it's gonna be really easy I say that watch me fail um, but I feel like it's gonna be easy so I guess we'll see how it works out um, oh boy all right Alexa set a timer for one hour one hour starting now Okay, um, the jalapeno popper chicken does call for cooked bacon, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll start with the bacon and then I'm going to work on the sirloin steak tips. Uh, it calls for 10 pieces of cooked bacon now and then uh, when you bake it you add 5 pieces of cooked bacon. And usually what I do is I go ahead, I don't like to put my shredded cheese or any toppings on it that I'm going to store in the fridge. It's just my preference. And so then the day, once it starts to get warm, then I'll add some of the cheese or I'll add the toppings. And so I think it probably has some cheese and then some bacon that goes on top. So I probably will bake this whole package and then store the, the topping ones in the fridge. Okay, so where's my meat? Put my knife down. Um, I'm gonna throw, go wash my hands, throw some salt and pepper on them, and then uh, toss them into the skillet that's been heating up. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and do the um, the whole chicken and just get that one out of the way and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm going to try something, and if it doesn't work, uh, I'll make sure I change the recipe. I'm going to, because I bought the steak seasoning for, I don't remember what week, but the week we had the hamburger um, steaks, I don't know what it was called, but basically you seasoned the hamburger meat with this. And so I'm just going to try it with the uh, chicken. So I'm going to add some seasonings into a bowl, and then we're going to season the chicken inside now, and I'm just going to put it in the crock pot. Again, I'm kind of nervous. I don't, I haven't researched this or anything, and I'm kind of nervous of leaving foil sitting on a chicken in the fridge for days. I don't, I don't know. So if I do add the foil balls, I'll just do it um, the day that I'm going to make it. All right, so let me mix the seasoning up. Okay, about a teaspoon or so of salt. A little pepper. I feel like this has pepper in it, so I don't want to use a whole lot in this. Um, a little smoked paprika. About a half to a quarter teaspoon. It's not a whole lot. I'm running out, so I've got to be a little cautious. And then about... Um, I'm going to go two tablespoons of this. So I'm kind of see it turned it a little red with the paprika. Maybe you can see that. I don't know. I, I know that sometimes things that you, the color, like when I watch a makeup tutorial, their color will look so different than mine. Um, so I know that sometimes the color doesn't transfer right. So we raise our own meat chickens in the backyard and we take them to a local uh, chicken processor to process them. So it, it, it looks really odd. I remove the wings from the ones we're going to eat whole because no one really ever eats the wings. And if you go and you buy chicken wings, uh, they're expensive for chicken wings. So probably just weird. I don't know. But this way I feel like we... Uh, can use actually have the chicken wings and have like a for a football game or something like that we can have chicken wings you can season um inside and out obviously outs better but then if you can get some on the inside i think i needed three tablespoons instead of two of the steak seasoning so i would like more seasoning on this and then also i don't know if i just I'm crazy read it somewhere I don't know but I cook the chicken breast down because a chicken breast can be drier so I feel like all the juices will run down into the chicken breast I don't know if it's a thing I don't know if I just made that up but that's what I like to do all right here's my chicken put the lid on it's ready to go in the fridge All right, I'm gonna get started on the meatloaf. Not looking forward to it. I probably should invest in some gloves so that I can not have to get my hands so gross. All right. I turned the uh, sirloin tips off. Just gonna let them continue. They're almost cooked. Just let them sit there and finish cooking on that. Um, yeah, I believe I need a half of an onion for this. Yes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my onion. All right, I'm going to add the uh, half uh, large onion diced into the bowl once I get the I don't know onion hairs whatever you call them off ok 
Okay, so the sirloin tips are brown and I'm just gonna put them to the side to cool. The binding agent I'm going to use is a half a cup of almond flour. We're gonna see how that works. Half of a uh, tomato paste can. Two tablespoons of Wor Worcestershire. One. Garlic and onion powder, two teaspoons. Oh, it's only to do one teaspoon. Oh well. I'm definitely. I do like my garlic, so I think it'll be fine. Let's hope. Two teaspoons of salt. And some pepper. I think I want to make a meatloaf that has this in it one time. Well, I guess that's kind of what the hamburger steaks were, huh? Okay, and I need two eggs to beat. I didn't really have room to beat the eggs, so I beat them over there, and I'm going to add in the two beaten eggs. All right, uh, so this is what it looks like. I use turkey because it's what I found on sale for half price this week, uh, but it wasn't a um, it's not low fat turkey. So it's I think it was eighty five fifteen. Um, I don't know if I was right. Anyway, so uh, I feel like it should still be fine. I'm hoping it tastes good. Nobody will know it's turkey but me. I hope. Um, but it smells good. I guess. That's probably all the seasoning, so that sounds really weird. Raw meat. Okay, moving on. Um, so, after you bake it for like 30 minutes, you can top it with sugar free barbecue sauce if you want, and you can make it yourself or buy it, whatever you want to do. And then, unless you don't like ketchup on top of your meatloaf, some people don't, you can add nothing or just tomato sauce. I like ketchup, so I will top mine with a sugar free ketchup. The bacon is done. Meatloaf is made. The sirloin tips are done. The chicken is in the crock pot. So now I need to work on, I guess I'll start on the jalapeno popper casserole. And I'm almost drank this. I'm gonna go wash out the bowl I made the meatloaf in um, so that I can mix up all the stuff for the jalapeno popper casserole. Okay, I need 12 ounces of cream cheese. Um, it calls for 12 ounces of cream cheese, a cup of sour cream, and a half cup of shredded cheese mixed together. So I'm going to shred the cheese. I'm going to guess that should be about a half a cup.
here's the bacon I'm gonna toss in on my dog's stair and want some. Okay, now um, I'm gonna do the jalapenos. I'm gonna do the seasonings, the jalapenos, and then the raw chicken. It doesn't say to drain the rotel, but I feel like the raw chicken is gonna release juices, so I think I'll strain it. I'll have to let you know how it turned out. <clears throat> Some uh, minced garlic. So I'm gonna scrape this part out and then just leave behind the green. This is what they look like after I um, scrape everything out. And then I just slice them into these little thin julienne sticks. And then I'm just gonna make them into tiny dices. I'm gonna add the jalapenos and then I'm gonna go wash my hands to then cut raw chicken to then wash my hands. Um, if you watched last week's video, if you were able to handle my, uh, my absent mindedness, I was rambling. I rambled very well. Like I probably could get an award for it, but, um, <laughs> last week it was a bit much. And I would say, anyway, if you watched it, you know, moving on. Um, so last week I made the chicken fajita casserole and it was pretty good. I mean, it was, it could use some tweaks or something, but I mean, as written, it was pretty good. So today for my lunch, I was super busy, had a lot going on, and so what I did is I heated up uh, some of the leftovers, and then took a low-carb tortilla and added one, I have like cheese slices for sandwiches, like the sharp cheddar or mild cheddar and the all those so i took one of the probably sharp cheddar i like sharp anyway took a slice of cheese put it on the court the tortilla not the corn the low carb and um took the hot uh chicken fajita casserole and put it on top of the cheese added some cilantro and a couple of dabs of um sour cream and then topped it with a little bit of salsa and it was really good and it was perfect for me to eat right before I ran out the door all right so this is done this is what it looks like I'm gonna spray the 9 by 13 pan and then I'm gonna dump this in there I don't see my spray so I'm just drizzled in some olive oil and I'm going to just wipe it in and then dump in the chicken Okay, and this is what the um, jalapeno chicken popper, whatever it is, casserole looks like. And then the day we make it, heat it up for almost the full time, and then I'll add um, the bacon. And it probably calls for some shredded cheese added on top as well. I don't remember. Alexa, how much time is left on my timer? You have six minutes and 20 seconds left on your one hour timer. All right. All right, so I've washed all this stuff again. Um, and now I'm working on the stir fry. So I'm gonna brown the meat and it needs to be browned with garlic and ginger and a little bit of salt and pepper. So I'm going to, I've got the ginger here. Um, and this is gonna be tedious. Okay, so I'm gonna um, start the meat browning. 
The recipe calls for one pound of meat, but I didn't want to just keep that small amount of ground turkey because it's like a 36 ounces or something. I don't remember, but it's more than two pounds. And last time I added extra meat to something that I did on here, it was too dry. So I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to add um, it to this because then I can add extra even broth or something if I have to. It's just a stir fry. So extra meat's not going to be a big deal. Okay, so it wasn't as hard as I, or as tedious as I thought. Um, so this is, I've got two pieces here. I'm just gonna dice them up. Um, the smell of fresh ginger is just amazing. I forgot how good it smells. Okay. Um, so that's what it looks like, um, if you can see that. Okay, so that's almost done. And then here is the uh, steak bites. Steak bites are not steak bites. The sirloin pieces. Um, they're definitely cool enough now. If you would have done this at the beginning, I feel like it would have been cool enough to package as well. Um, so it's done. Um, Alexa, stop. Okay, so this I'm going to add two bags of coleslaw to and uh, green onions. And I have, it's optional, um, sesame seeds. But I bought mine a while back from Azure Standard, if that's how you say it. Because um, I was going to make my own tahini, I think that's it. I haven't made any tahini. So I have that. Um, and I have brags that I get from... Um, Walmart. I'm sorry, this finger is so hot and then every, all the other ones are cold. Um, I feel like, depending on how long it takes to get this um, straightened back up, I might make the egg drop soup, but I might not. I don't know. You probably also could have made your spaghetti squash if you were going to while you're baking the bacon. I feel like you could have easily have uh, thrown the spaghetti squash in there and had that pre-done as well. So then the day you eat it, you just toss in your um, steak, mushrooms, broth, seasoning, whatever it is, heat it all up and throw it on top of your spaghetti squash. And that would have been probably a smarter thing to do than what I did. Um, and that's it. I, I feel like it's done. And I'm, I always look forward to some of these meals. And then sometimes the ones I look so forward to, I'm a little bit disappointed in probably because I'm really excited to have it. And then it's kind of over hyped in my own head, whatever. Um, well, hopefully this is helpful. Um, as soon as I learn how to do videos, I can get, oh, there's, I have no idea. I can do this myself and get them out faster. Uh, my husband in the past two days, yesterday was a 17 hour day and then today's gonna be a 15 hour day. Um, so he just worked so hard and then I need his help here, but um, Hopefully one day I can do this by myself and he won't have to be the one that always helps me. And he's on his way home. Um, so I guess until next time, hopefully this is helpful to someone. Have a nice day.